Today on Zoom. All right, Zoomers. Can you guess who this is? Scrapbooks are a great way to save fun memories. And today on Zoom, I'm going to show you how to make one so you can save your memories. Little. Big. 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 Little. Oh, I think it's so cute when baby dog babble. Bye bye, 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 Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks! Georgia. Here are all our baby pictures. We have to try to guess whose picture is who. All right, Zoomers, can you guess who this is? I, no. I, yeah, I think it's Caroline. I think I it's think Caroline. It's, no, wait. Oh. I think it's Buzz. I, no, wait. No, 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 no there's pink on it. There's so, like I pink. think it's Caroline. I think it's Caroline. Oh, and so what is know. your final guess? Caroline. Caroline. Yeah. Okay. Caroline. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The idea to make one was sent in by Jill G. of South Orange, New Jersey. And today on Zoom, I'm going to show you how to make one so you can save your memories. Here's what you'll need. Some cardboard, a hole puncher, some fabric with a nice design on it, some glue, construction paper, and ribbon. First, cut two pieces of cardboard that are a little larger than your construction paper. These will be the front and back covers of your book. Then, using a hole puncher, punch three holes in the left side of your cardboard, like this. Now, cut two pieces of fabric that are a little larger than your cardboard. Here. The best way to do this is to lay your cardboard down on the fabric and then trace around the cardboard, leaving two inches on all of the sides. Then, cut your fabric out. You can cut off the corners if you want. It makes it easier to fold. Now, spread some glue on the edges of your cardboard. This part. There we go. Now, I'm going to fold over the fabric. Here, fold that one in. Go. And tuck the corner in like this. Tuck it in. There we go. Now, glue a sheet of construction paper on the cardboard side of your cover, overlapping the fabric. Do this on both pieces. This will keep your book looking good, and it helps the fabric stay together. So here, take some glue around the edges. There we go. So like this. There. Now, feel along the edge of your cover for the holes. So, here's one. Okay. Make slits where the holes are with scissors. So, yeah. I think there's one, right? There's it. Right there. Okay. So, there we go. And if you're not allowed to use scissors, make sure you ask an adult to help you. Poke it in. Go. And the last one. Oh, okay. There. You can use a pencil to make the holes larger. So I'm going to poke it through. Where'd it go? There we go. Now my front cover's done. Now, take your construction paper and punch three holes on the left side of each sheet. You might want to use reinforcements around the holes so the paper doesn't rip. Now, my front cover is done, and I made my back cover earlier. There we go. So now, I'm going to take the ribbon and thread it through the three pieces of my book. Thread it through. I have to find the holes. One. Two. There we go and tie it together. Make sure you do this with all three holes. So, here we go. Tie it in a bow. Whoops. There. Okay, now I'm gonna start with the next one. Here. There. I'm done. Cool. When you're finished threading through the holes, you're ready to paste things in your scrapbook. You can even think of a theme for your scrapbook, like school days, and have a page for each grade. Or, you can make a scrapbook for a special trip or event. But whatever you do, I'm sure you'll be very happy when you go to look back on your memories later on. Today's member of the Zoom team does to volunteer. Check it out. And later, we'll tell you what you can do to get involved. Hi, I'm Dan Allen, and I'm the first director. And we started a nonprofit organization called Turkey's Hello, Joey. Hi, Bailey. Oh, wow. Hi, Maria. Hi, That's huge. The company Turkey's is a way 
that Danny and I donate turkeys to the poor on Thanksgiving. Thanks, Joey. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Have a good Thank Thanksgiving. You. About five years ago, I was watching the news one night, and the Greater Boston Food Bank was on. They were short about 5,000 turkeys. I thought that was very wrong, so I went around the neighborhood collecting turkeys for the poor. Beth, you get the closest. I'll get the Lopianos. Okay. What we did was we put flyers in the mailboxes. The following years, we've contacted past donors, asked if they'd like to donate again this year. Forty dollars. Wow. Thank you very much. And the response has been great. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. But this year we have a website also, which really makes a big difference. It really helps everything out. But also we will send flyers to people who've donated in the past. We will go around the neighborhood, just like the first year, sending out flyers to people. We also went around to school, and on Friday we had a turkey dress day where kids would donate either checks, cash, or turkeys, and um, kids were lined up in the hall ready to donate. It was wonderful. First year we got 36, the next year we got 360, the year after that 1,000, and finally last year over 1,800. This year, we're extremely proud to tell you that Danny and Betsy have exceeded their goal of 4,000 turkeys. So we're here to uh, honor Betsy and Danny Nowey, two children who have done more for the hungry in five years than most folks do in an entire lifetime. It feels great knowing you've made a difference. Um, when you sit down at the Thanksgiving dinner, knowing you've done something like this, it makes you feel great knowing that you've helped others. So hopefully uh, we'll continue to grow, and we're hoping that in the future there'll be a Turkeys R Us Indiana, a Turkeys R Us Illinois, a Turkeys R Us California, and it keeps on growing and growing until there's no more hunger, and that's our greatest goal really, is to end hunger. If you want to start your own drive or something like this, you have to pick what you want to help, and um, you keep doing it, don't give up. You can just start in your neighborhood like we did, and pretty soon you'll get the whole town involved. But you really have to put the time and effort into it and get great things accomplished. Definitely. You should realize that kids can make a difference in their lives. You and your friends can become members of the Zoom team together. Here's how. Get a group of friends and plan a project. Like a car wash to benefit a charity, or a clothing drive for a homeless shelter. Be sure to tell us all about it at the Zoom website, where you can also find what other kids are doing. Zoom into action. Zoom into action. And join the Zoom team. Oh. Well, hello, Ms. Dubby. Why, hello, Ms. Dubby. Oh, isn't she the cutest thing? Oh, thank oh. you. She has her mother's eyes and her father's smile. Oh, mother, mother, and I'm having grabby. <laughs> What's she saying? Oh, nothing. She's just speaking gibberish. <laughs> you know, baby talk. Bubby, bubby, baba. I'm a double, bubby, double, bubby. I'm a double, I'm rubber, rubby, have I'm grabby. Oh, I think it's so cute when babies talk babble. Oh. Bubby, bubby, baba, baba. Have I rubbed my baby, baba, baba. Have I rubbed my baby, baba. Oh, isn't that sweet? You actually think she was trying to say something. I love it, my baby, Goodbye. Well, goodbye. It was nice seeing you. I love it, my baby, Zoom, chat. Zoom, chat. Zoom, chat. Meredith and Colleen of Park Ridge, Illinois sent us an email asking us these questions. What's your position in the family? Why do you like the position you're in? Why don't you like the position you're in? And by position, they mean if you're the youngest, the oldest, the middle, or an only child. <laughs> well, I'm a middle child, and so I really love being the middle because I get to be a big sister and a younger sister. I have a little brother and a little older sister. Oh, cool. And so it's really cool because I get to experience being treated sort of like, you know, the youngest and sort of like the yeah. oldest. I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. I have an older sister named Mickey, and we're pretty close in age. 
I love being the youngest mm -hmm. because, like, in lots of games, the youngest goes first, and, always, yeah. and I'm always like, yes, and the youngest, I, I like getting treated, like, younger, because then you uh, you can have more fun. You don't have to act always mature, mm -hmm. but I don't like being youngest because sometimes my um, older sister, she can like boss me around. Yeah, because she's older than me, so she can boss me around. Mm -hmm. I can so, relate to that because yeah. I'm the youngest too, mm -hmm. and I just I have two older sisters, and sometimes I like being the youngest because, like you, I don't feel like always having to be mature, but mm -hmm. sometimes it gets annoying because my sisters sometimes get to do more than me, and since they're both older, they like have more to talk about. Because all I want to do is, like, play games. Yeah. And talk that, that but I like being the youngest. Me too. I'm the oldest. Mm -hmm. And I like being the oldest because I get to do stuff that my little sister can't. Mm. And I don't like being the oldest because sometimes I have to babysit it. And yeah. set examples and stuff like that. And it's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the oldest, it's like... It's two different things. You have to set examples for the little one, or if you're like an only child, which I used to be, it's lots of fun. But sometimes you don't like it because you don't have anybody to talk to. Mm. I remember my sister telling me that when, uh, before I was born, she always got all the attention and she got spoiled uh -huh. because she was, uh -huh. she was only two. And so when she got spoiled, then when I came, she said that, um, uh, all the attention went directed to me, but she still yeah, got attention, but my, she said... Yeah, my oldest sister, I have two oldest, my oldest sister, um, when she was only a child, she really liked it, but then she yeah. wished she had another sister, sister that she could talk to, and then she got a, a sis, another sister, mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, I'm happy, but, um, at least I have one sister, and then she got another one, and she uh, was like, really, really happy, and she had two sisters. I wish for one day that I could be the oldest, <laughs> and like, oh, um, you yeah, got the oldest. Yeah, to see how it, yes, to see how it feels, and yes. Francis, you could be the, the youngest. youngest. Yeah, one yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zoomers, see this index card? I've attached a paper clip so that it pokes out the middle on the other side like this. Do you think that if I put this paper clip the end into the straw, which is attached to another index card, do you think that Kaylee can blow this index card off? Try it. This should be pretty easy. <laughs> wow, it won't blow off the straw. It won't work, no matter how hard she blows. This phenom was sent in by Maggie W. of Brookline, New Hampshire. To set up this phenom, all you'll need is two index cards, a paper clip, some tape, and a straw. Mark the center of an index card and cut a hole just large enough to fit the straw through. I'll push it through. Mm -hmm. Tape the straw to the index card so that it won't move. Okay. Eric, do you mind? Could you hold sure. that for me? Thanks. Okay. There. Here, I'll do one on the other side. Uh -huh. Turn it around. <laughs> okay. Now, bend your paper clip so that one end is facing up. Push your paper clip through another index card. <laughs> Tape the paper clip to the index card. Like this. Did you help? Sure. Did you hold that? Yeah. Tape up down. Like. Now, Place the straw over the paper clip. Okay. Push it through. The paper clip is only here to make sure that the index card doesn't move back and forth. Turn it upside down and blow. <laughs> See? The index card doesn't blow off of the straw. Here's another way that you can do it. Try putting the index cards in the straw on the table so that you're blowing down. Then, as you blow, slowly pick up the straw and the top index card. 
And the bottom index card should come up with you. That's right. See? As you blow, the bottom index card comes up with me. Here's how this phenomenon works. First, you have to remember that there's air all around us and it's pushing everything in all directions. That air is pushing up and down on all sides of the index card. Now, you have to think about what happens when you blow it on the straw. When you blow it on the straw, the air moves very, very fast toward the bottom index card. But because it's moving so fast, it slips out the space in between the two cards. Now, because the air slips out between the two cards, it doesn't have enough force to push down the bottom index card. Remember the other air that was pushing on everything in the room? Well, that air is still pushing on the bottom of the index card. But since there's not enough air pushing in between the two index cards, the air pushing on the bottom pushes it up and holds the two index cards together. Try it at home. See how small you can cut the index cards so it still does this. Test it out and send your discoveries to Zoom. machine called Breakfastopia, which is very complex and does a simple task of flipping the pancake onto your plate and putting the coffee into your cup. Now, the way it starts out is we crank this handle, which drops the baseball into this tube. The baseball rolls through, comes out, and lands in this cup, which flips the pancake onto your plate. As the baseball is passing through the tube, it also hits this lever. This lever with the screw pokes a hole into the bottle, which pours all the water into this container, which becomes heavier than this container. This lever is then raised up, and the marbles roll out into the marble machine. The marbles roll down and come out at the base. They set off the mouse trap, and with the help of these pulleys, the mouse trap is able to successfully lift up the kettle and pour the coffee into your mug. And this is how it works. Zoom game. The big and little game. Sent in by Kelby C. of Upland, Indiana. See if you can figure out how to play. That's huh? sweet. So, big. Little. Big. Little. Big. Little. Little. Big. Big. Oh, oh, my God. God. Chad Francis. Chad. Well, you would have been out, Francis, but since that was a practice round, you can stay in. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? If I say the word big, I have to make the motion for Lil with my hands. Then I point to another person. That person can say big or little and make the opposite motion with their hands. So Fran could say little and make the motion for big with her hands. Then she points to a different person. Okay, so, so right. can I start? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, big. 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 Little. Big. Little. Oh. oh we we tried Caroline. You said little and it really, really did the little. <laughs> big. Little. Little. Uh, <laughs> you're like, oh, little. 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 I think you're a friend. Am I out?
you hesitated. Yeah, I think you hesitated. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> little, big, big, little, big, little, little, big, little. Oh! oh. <laughs> you went big. I was like, yeah, you know, big. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's trying to be a become the property of Zoom and will be eligible for inclusion in all Zoom media. This means that we can share your ideas with other Zoomers on TV, the web, in print materials, and in other Zoom ways. So, send it to Zoom. You can find tons of recipes for snacks, a peanut butter and banana masterpiece, munchies, here's your edible spider, frozen treats, the inside from tastes like ice cream. And thirst quenchers. Yummy. At the Cafe Zoom section of your Zoom website. Mmm. Yum. <laughs> so check them out at pbskids.org. Huh? Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation. America's investment in the future. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. A private corporation funded by the American people. And by contributions to your PBS station. From viewers like you. Thanks! A production of WGBH Boston.